Hello everyone, today we are looking at the ACM modes available in the JF-17, along with the air-to-air -air weapons that we have available. The information provided in ACM mode is the same information we covered in our intercept radar mode video. So check that out first if you want to learn more about the air-to-air -air radar and the information it provides. Let's take a quick look at the primary controls for today. It will include the sensor select switch, S1, the sensor control switch, S2, the weapon launch button, S3, the gun trigger, S4, the chain weapon button, S5, and the weapon type select button, S8. We can quickly enter the ACM mode of the radar by pressing forward on S1. The SMS page will automatically be selected on the left MFD, the radar on the center MFD, and the HSD on the right MFD. Let's go ahead and review the SMS page. At the top left, you'll see A slash A1. We can have different weapon programs set in the Jeff. Usually these will be for the different weapons we have, but you can also set it up to have two different profiles for the same missile if you wish. You can switch between these modes with S8 on the stick or by pressing the button on the MFD and selecting the one you want. You can also cycle between the weapons in the program with S5. This can be useful for maintaining balance on the aircraft. Next to the mode, we have the feed button. This will only be able to be activated once you have the gun selected and it must be pressed before the gun will fire. You may also need to use it if the gun jams. This can only be used three times before it'll become inoperative though, so be aware of that. On the far right, we have the load button. Normally you won't be using this as a DTC load will automatically add the weapons to your SMS page. However, if something goes wrong, you can manually load the weapons into the SMS page for your aircraft. On the left side, we have our gun select button. You can press this in order to activate the gun or you can cycle the gun on and off with S1 forward when in ACM mode. Across from the gun select button, we have the selected weapon and its power status. Some weapons you will need to turn on here while others will automatically be turned on when selected and master arm is on. All of our air to air weapons will automatically be turned on, but if you are ever having issues launching a weapon, take a quick glance here and make sure your weapon is selected and powered on. Everything else below here are options for your currently selected weapon, gun, or program. In the center of the MFD, you will see the current program and all of the options available for it. With the SD10 selected, you can see that we have six different options available. According to the documentation for the JF-17, the prep mode has no function. Weapon select will allow you to select the available weapons in your current mode. In our case, the SD-10 or PL-5. Next up, missile bit has no function in DCS. Moving to target type, you can select between small, medium, or large. Set this based on your current target size or suspected target size. The limiter is the gun limiter and controls the burst length of the gun. We can set it to off, 0.2 seconds, or 0.5 seconds. With the gun side option, we can select the different symbology for our gun reticles. Our first option is SS or snapshot. With the snapshot sight, you will have a history line from the gun bore sight that trails off. On this line, you will also have an intersecting line indicating range. Basically, you want to put your target at the intersection of these lines and squeeze the trigger. Next, we have lead computing optical sight or LCOS. The LCOS will provide you with a gun pipper with a line drawn to the gun bore sight cross. The pipper will provide distance from target information in the form of a solid line that will retract counterclockwise as you close on the target. There is also an outer triangle that indicates closure speed. It takes a while to get a hang of all this information on the pipper, but once you have it down, it's extremely efficient at providing you the information you need. And finally, we have the SSLC or snapshot lead computing mode. This is a combination of both the snapshot and LCOS, providing you with both snapshot line and the LCOS pipper. This is the mode I prefer as it provides you with the most information. However, you should experiment with each one of these until you find the one that you are comfortable with. Also, you can set the default site in the special menu options for the JF-17. Now let's switch over to the PL-5. You'll notice that a lot of the options go away, but the remaining options are the same that we had with the SD-10. So there's really nothing else to cover here on the air-to-air -air SMS page. Okay, now let's put to use all the different ACM modes. I've created this simple mission with some drones first to shoot at. 
We'll go back into ACM mode with S1 forward. This will take us into vertical scan mode indicated by a VT on your radar, and you'll also get two vertical dash lines on the HUD to show the approximate area that the radar is searching. In this mode, the radar will scan a 10 degree by 50 degree area in front of your aircraft. The radar will lock any targets found in this scan zone and change to single target track mode. You will also notice that it automatically selected our PL5s, but in this case I want to use an SD-10. Let's go ahead and switch to the SD-10 on our right wing. Okay, so we've managed to lock up our own AWACS here. You can tell it's friendly by the X in the target box or looking at the HSD and seeing that we have locked a friendly green target. Once it's out of the scan area, we can drop lock by pressing S2. When you drop a target, the radar will default back to the previous mode it was in. In this case, it's going to go back to vertical scan mode. All right, let's spawn a drone at waypoint one. We'll continue this turn until we have a target in our scan volume. Once the target is locked, the radar will exit ACM mode and go into single target track. We now have the target locked as indicated by the target box in the HUD and indications on our radar and HSI. Let's take a quick look at the target box. In the center, you will see a number indicating the time of flight of the missile and a carrot on the side of the box. If the carrot is on the left side of the target box, it is within max range. If it is on the bottom of the box, it is within the no escape zone. And if it is on the right of the box, it is at minimum range. If the target box is not within the HUD area, you will get a target box on the edge of your HUD with a line and arrow pointing towards the target. On the left side of the HUD, we have our weapons information. We can see that our SE-10 is selected and ready. We want to put the aiming point inside of the allowable steering error circle or ASE to give our missile the best chance of a hit. There's the shoot cue and we are lined up. We can now fire the missile with S3. Be sure to maintain lock until the SD-10 goes active. At this range, it's pretty much as soon as it comes off the rail. And that's a good kill. For our second target, we'll use boresight mode along with the PL-5 missile. Keep in mind, you don't need a radar lock to fire the PL-5, being that it is an IR missile. We enter boresight mode by pressing S2 forward while the radar is in ACM mode. This will be indicated by a BS on your radar page and the scan circle on your HUD. In boresight mode, the radar will scan a cone of four degrees in front of your aircraft. This again will scan out to 10 nautical miles and will auto lock any target within this zone. While in boresight mode, we also have the ability to narrow the scan down. You can toggle it on and off by pressing S2 while no target is locked. Now that we are set back up, let's spawn another drone in. All we need to do is put the target inside the circle on our HUD and the target will be locked up. As in vertical scan mode, the radar will enter single target track mode once a target is locked. With the PL-5, you will have a small circle on your HUD that indicates where the seeker head is looking. You want to have this as close to your target as possible. Once the seeker has locked on, you will hear a lock tone indicating that it has locked onto your target. Again, there are cues when to shoot. First, we'll get an in range, followed by a shoot. These will only be available if the target is radar locked. If you are trying to be super sneaky and not use the radar, you will have to estimate your range to target for a good shot. Once we have the in-range cue, we will also gain our aiming point and ASE. Just like with the SD-10, use these for the best shot. A lot of the time when you are in close, you don't really need to worry about these, but it can be useful for a max range shot. And there's our shoot cue, so we'll press S3 and release a PL-5. and splash another drone. Let's turn around and set up for our final drone. For our final target, we'll use the gun and set the radar to the HUD ACM mode. We can enter the HUD mode by pressing right on S2 while in any ACM mode. Similar to boresight mode, we also have a wide option that can be toggled on and off by pressing S2. 
This mode will scan the area of the HUD for targets. Like before, it scans out to 10 nautical miles and will automatically lock any target within that area and switch to single target track. Let's toggle our gun on by pressing forward on S1. You can see on the left side of the HUD that the gun is crossed out, meaning that it is not ready to be fired. This is because we haven't fed it yet. To do so, we press the feed button on the SMS page. Once done, you will see that the gun is now ready to fire. My gun sight is set to SSLC, so that is the symbology that we'll be using. So you know, the JF-17 isn't the best gun's dogfighter. Its gun is canted down, meaning that you have to pull a lot of lead in order to get a good shot. You should really only be getting into air-to-air -air guns fight as an absolute last resort. Okay, we have it locked up. Now we just need to get in a position for a good gun shot. But while we're closing the gap, here's a few notes for you. First, while in any ACM mode, you can always get back to intercept mode by pushing the master mode switch up to intercept mode. Second, when you deselect a target, it will always go back to the previous mode the radar was in. And third, stay away from guns fights in the Jeff. While it can do it, it's by no means the best at it. And good hits on our final drill. And that's it for ACM modes in the JF-17. Hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.